Understanding the camera is like unlocking a superpower in After Effects. Most editors stay stuck in 2D, sliding layers left and right, scaling things up, adding motion blur, and that's it. But the moment you learn After Effects camera, you're no longer just moving layers, you're moving through them. You turn a flat design into a full-blown cinematic scene. Whether you're flying through text, orbiting around 3D graphics, or simulating real-world depth, and much more. But it will only happen if you know how to use the camera. And if you think After Effects camera is way too advanced for you, then give me some minutes, and I will prove you wrong. So without crashing the After Effects, let's get started. If you ever collected enough courage to create a camera in After Effects, Something pops up on the screen like this, and most of the people will hit OK and thinks, why the hell this camera is not listening to me? So if you don't want this to happen with you, then listen this video very carefully. First of all, you have the opportunity to choose the camera type. To explain this, let's, let's suppose your head is a camera, and if you rotate your head, then you will see different things depending on your surroundings. But the main restrictions is this, you can't control your eyeball, and the ability to control your eyeball to view different things without changing your position or rotation is called point of interest. The main difference between a node camera and a two-node camera is the one-node camera rotates around itself, but the two-node camera follows its point of interest, and you can create stunning camera movement with both of them. Just imagine, you can look at various things through your eye without rotation your head or changing your position, and the two-node camera does exactly the same thing. It gives an additional property called point of interest to view at different objects. Now the ultimate question is, which one is better? Now the next important thing in camera is its preset. There's a lot of options to choose from. Starting from 15 millimeter goes all the way to 200 millimeter. And let me show you why your camera lens matters and which one you should choose to get the best results. But before this, I'm gonna ask you a simple question. Did you ever seen these kind of scene in movies? This is called dolly zoom and it is achieved by changing the focal length of the camera, and you can see how the field of view is changing with change in the focal length. Just look at this. These are some photos shot with different camera lenses, and in the beginning it feels like the field of view is increasing as we are shifting towards smaller lenses. To confirm this statement, this is a scene setup, and if I double-click on the camera and change the camera preset to a smaller number, you can see we can see more objects in on the screen. Now let's hit OK to create the camera. And the first thing which you have to do is convert all the layers into 3D. So we will select all the keyframes and press F4 to reveal the cube button, and then press it to make every layer 3D. Now when we are going to work in 3D spaces, let's see to arrange layers in 3D spaces. And this is one of the challenging things which scares most of the people. Okay, so first off, let's understand how to work with 3D spaces. So first we, we will place our mouse on preview panel and then press tilde key to go full screen. And first of all, we will click on this button called Draft 3D. And if nothing crazy happens at your side, then press these both buttons. And this will create X and Y plane, and you will be able to place your layers with precision. And if you want to control the transparency of the axis planes, then hold this button and you will be able to control the transparency of the planes outside the composition with this slider. Now with this button, you can view your view your scenes with a lot of angles. Currently, we are seeing through the camera, which is also known as active camera but you can switch to whatever angle you want. For example, this is a 2D shape, and we can only see it from the front view and on the back view because, even though it's 3D, but it's acting like it's drawn on a paper, and we can't see anything from the any other view. But if we add some rotation to some elements, then you can see we are able to see something on each view. But here's a problem, that we can't see where our camera is located. So to see our camera, we will change the one view to two view, or even four view, but I would recommend to keep it at two view only, unless you have extra monitor to work with. On the left-hand side, we have the active camera, and this is the view which will be rendered. And on the right side, we can switch to any of the view we want. To change the view, first we have to click on the right side to select this, and you can see these four blue corner, which are telling us that we are working on this view. You can choose custom view one, two, three, and orbit around to inspect your scene from any angle. Very useful for positioning layers, lights, or cameras accurately in 3D. It ignores what the actual camera sees, just gives you a flexible workspace. Now you can see where is your camera is, and as well as what's the view from the camera on the left side. One node cam versus two node cam. A one node camera doesn't have point of interest as two node camera has, and when you rotate a one node camera, it rotates around itself. But if you do the same with a two node camera, then it feels like it's automatically orienting itself towards the point of interest. And you can adjust the point of interest in a two-node camera by clicking on the camera, and this straight line determines the point of interest. 
and you can adjust it by dragging it at any point as you wish. There are many ways to move the camera, so let's discuss each one of them one by one. First of all, we will click on this button called Orbit Around Cursor Tool, and it's used to rotate the camera. The next button is Pan Camera, and by this button, you can move sideways or up and down. The last button is a Dolly button and can be used to zoom in and out. You can cycle between each one of these buttons by pressing C, but if you want to quickly switch between these three buttons in a blink of an eye, then I would suggest to use Unified Camera Tool, and you can do it by holding Alt key, and while holding, if you click left button of the mouse, you can switch to Orbit Tool, and if you again clicked to right button of the mouse, then it will switch to Dolly Tool, and if you press the middle button of the mouse wheel, then you can select the Pan Tool to move the camera. Now remember one thing, that these buttons can't be used to move the camera on custom view or any other view. It will only move the view within the 3D space. You can use these buttons to go whatever angle you want in 3D space. To animate the camera, first you have to add keyframes on the position property. If you animate the camera from one point to another, it follows the boring linear motion by default, which lacks physics because when a thing starts, it usually starts from zero acceleration and goes all the way to max speed, and then it slowly stops to the end. So always make sure to add proper smoothness to the keyframes. Now you could find yourself in a situation where you have to add more than two keyframes on camera property. And if you watch the animation, then you can notice the camera stops completely for a moment, which doesn't feel good and there are three ways to prevent this. The first thing which you can do is separate the dimensions and animate the each property separately so that movement doesn't stop, but this creates restrictions to move the camera freely. And this is the why everyone parent the camera to the null. Because when we parent the camera to the null, we get access to manipulate the camera position or rotation without using the camera layer. and by parenting multiple nulls to the one who's above it, we can create as many camera movement as we want without stopping the camera. Depth of fields. In real life, when we use smartphone, the background becomes blur, and if we focus our eye on the subject, then our smartphone becomes blur, and this can also achieved in real-world camera from the depth of field. Depth of field is like deciding what part of the scene gets your full attention, and what gets ignored in a blur. To activate the depth of field, you have to open the camera options and activate the depth of field. We can control the depth of field using these three properties. So let's see what each one of them does. Focus distance is used to tell the After Effects where the focus should be or which layer should be in focus. You can see where your focus is if you switch the view to any one view. And if you change the focus distance, then it will update in the real time. You can see that if it changed the focus distance to the behind text layer, then our camera is able to focus on both texts at a time. But let's say we want to blur the first text, then we have to use the aperture property. The aperture controls the amount of light passes through the camera, and somehow it also controls the amount of blur. Here's are some shot with different aperture values. In simple terms, if you increase the aperture, then it will decrease the f-stop value, and you will get a shallow depth of field. And if I want to blur the subject and focus my camera on the object, first we need to make sure our focus distance is reaching towards the object or background, and then slowly increase the aperture value, and you will start to see the subject is being blurry as we are increasing the aperture. You can also do this by increasing the blur level. Imagine you are sitting on a moving vehicle and enjoying the beautiful motion blur while watching the roads. But if you see sideways, then you can notice the object which are closer to you are moving much muster than the object which are far from us. And this is called a parallax effect. For example, this is a simple scene setup. And if I move the camera, then it looks like I'm moving of image which doesn't have any depth, even though our layers are 3D. So to fix this, we will position our layers in the Z axis, and you can notice now it's much smaller. And now if we move the camera, then you can notice the background layer is moving very slowly as compared to the subject. Now you want to make it move even more slower. Then place the layer even more in the Z axis. Now let's discuss some pro tips while using the camera animation. So in this scene, I've animated my camera, and now I want to add some more layers in my scene. So when I dragged this layer and made it 3D, 
it suddenly disappeared, and this might frustrate you in the beginning. But let's has know why this happened and how to fix this. So when we animated our camera from the starting point, it was first seeing at the origin. And where we moved the camera in 3D space, it's no longer looking at the origin. And when we made our layer 3D, it basically moves towards the origin. And to confirm this, you can see the position of the layer. Now, if you want to make it appear in front of the camera, then what you have to do is press Control plus Alt plus Home key, and this will center the anchor point of the layer. And then we will simply press Control plus Home key, and suddenly we are able to see the layer in front of the camera. And you can also see the position of the layer is changed now to fit the camera view. While working with the camera in After Effects, always try to use the one-node camera, because a two-node camera automatically orients itself to the point of interest, and you have to keyframe's point of interest in order to look at any other layer. And if you use a one-node camera, you can look wherever you want freely. Both cameras are used for different scenarios, so choose the camera wisely depending on your need. One more thing which I want to tell you is, when you appearance the camera to the null object, then simply just duplicate it four to five times depending on your need, and parents them to the one above it. And this will help you to save your time in animating the camera. Next, I've seen many people bang their head while working with camera, so let me give you some tips so you don't. So first, hold this button and select 3D reference axes. And here you can see the red, green, blue represents X, Y, Z axes respectively. And this will help you to move the layers with ease. And when you want to rotate the later, then don't use this, and go all the way in the fourth dimension instead. See this pink link and rotate it in circle? And you can see it's working perfectly. And let's say if you want to move it 90 degrees them, use shift key, and it will snap the points in multiple of five, and you can snap it easily. Now, if you want to see where your camera is, then first change this view from active view to another view, and select this camera, and you will be able to see it. And if you want to see the camera all the time without pressing it every time, then just select this hamburger icon and then click View Options, and then change the camera wireframe to On, and then hit OK. And now we can see our camera without touching it, and this gives the idea what's it's seeing through. Next thing which I noticed in beginner user is, they use orbit around tool. They don't use it correctly and think it's hard to them. But you just point your mouse on the point where you want to rotate, then it will just work fine. You can also zoom in a little bit in order to move the camera even more smoother. See this how smoothly it's working? Just remember to take your mouse on the point where you want to rotate. And if you want to rotate in a specific axis, then hold shift while doing it and you will fall in love with camera in After Effects. All right, guys, this was it for today. I hope you learned something new in this video. And if you don't want to miss this kind of informative tutorials, then hit that bell icon to stay notified. And if you want to know how to edit subtitles like a pro, then watch this video and you will be amazed to know secrets to make viral subtitles.